Well, Watson, what do you make of it? How did you know what I was doing? I believe you have eyes in the back of your head. I do have a shiny coffee pot in front of me. But... Tell me, Watson, what do you make out of our visitor's stick? Since we have yet to meet him, let's see what we can deduct about him. I think that Dr. Monomer is a successful elderly medical man, well esteemed since those who know him gave him this mark of appreciation. Good. Excellent. Well, I also think he's a country practitioner who has a great deal of his visiting on foot. I can see why you think so. Because the stick, originally a handsome one, has been so knocked about that I can hardly imagine a town practitioner carrying it. The thick iron ferrule is worn down, so it is evident that he has done a great amount of walking with it. Perfectly sound. And then again there is the friend of the CCH. I should guess that to be the something hunt. The local hunt to whose members he has given some surgical assistance, and which has made him a small presentation in return. Really, Watson, you excel yourself, but your deduction is all wrong. You did give me an interesting idea, though. Interesting, although elementary. There are certainly one or two indications upon the stick. It gives us the basis for several deductions. Certainly a country practitioner and also likes walking. Then I was right, to that extent. But that was all. I can tell you this man comes from Charing Cross Hospital, hence this CCH engraving here. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm very glad I didn't lose that stick. I thought I forgot it somewhere. A gift, I see. Yes, sir. From Charing Cross Hospital. My friends gave it to me after I married. Did you? That's bad. Why was it bad? Only you have disarranged our little inductions. You're married, you say? Yes, I had to leave the hospital to make a home of my own. Come, come. We're not far wrong after all. And now, Dr. James Mortimer. Mr. Sir, Mr. A humble MRCS. A man of precise mind, evidently. I see you make your own cigarettes. Don't hesitate in lighting one. So, without further ado, allow me to unravel the nature of the problem I need your assistance in. Here I have a manuscript. Indeed. I saw that as you entered the room. It's an old one. 18th century, I presume. Unless it is forged. How can you say that, sir? It could only be an expert to decide whether it is or not. I put this manuscript at 1730. I've written an article about this nature of manuscripts. The exact date is 1742. This family paper was given to me by Sir Charles Baskerville for care, whose death some months ago created a, quite a storm in Devonshire. I may say that I was his personal friend as well as, do as, well as doctor. And he, he was a strong-minded man, sir. Shrewd, very practical. You will observe, Watson, the alternative use of a short S and a long one, which allowed me to find the date. It appears to be a statement of sorts. Indeed it is, one that describes the certain legend which runs in the Baskerville family. It relates to the most urgent matter, which must be decided within 24 hours. Allow me to read it to you. Of the origin of the Hound of the Baskervilles, there have been many statements. Yet, as I come in a direct line from Hugo Baskerville, and I heard the story from my father, who also learned it from his, we have learned that we should not 
fear from the fruits of the past. In the time of the Great Rebellion, this manor was held by Hugo Baskerville, a man with such a godless, profane persona, making him a name by world through the West. He was so lecherous and became obsessed with a local farmer's daughter, kidnapping her. Finding out later she escaped, Hugo Baskerville released his hounds in pursuit after her. One of Hugo's close friends followed him and later found him wallowing in his own blood. His body was left with marks of a giant foul beast hunting the family ever since. Well, do you find it interesting to a collector of fairy tales? Too? The recent sudden death of Sir Charles Baskerville, whose name was mentioned as a possible election candidate, has cast a gloom over the county. He, w he was known as a character of extreme generosity and won the respect of all. The circumstances of death have not yet been cleared, but rumors of superstition have given rise. The next Baskerville line to inherit the hall is Mr. Henry Baskerville. Those are the facts, Mr. Holmes, regarding the death of Sir Charles Baskerville. I must thank you for calling my attention to such an interesting case. If this article contains the public facts, now let me hear the private ones. Within the last few months, Charles' nervous system was about to break. It was obvious the whole story has affected him. They say there were no footprints. He saw them. Footprints? A man's or a woman's? There were prints of a gigantic hound. You saw this? As clearly as I see you. And you said nothing? What was the use? The marks were 20 yards from the body and no one gave them a thought. There are many ship dogs in the pool? No doubt, but this was not a ship dog. You say it was large? Enormous, and Sir Charles stood there for about 10 minutes. How do you know? The ash from his cigar dropped twice. Excellent! See, this is a colleague. Henry Baskerville. Oh, hello. Very nice. To nice meet. to meet you, Very Mr. Nice. Holmes. Hello. Nice. Pray take a seat, Sir Henry. I understand you had a remarkable experience since arriving at London. Nothing of much importance, Mr. Holmes. Only a joke, as like as not. It was really this letter, if you can even call it a letter, which reached me this morning. No one could have known the address. It was only decided after meeting Dr. Mortimer. But Dr. Mortimer was no doubt already stopping there. No, we were staying with a friend. It seems someone is very interested in the movements. Sir Henry Baskerville. As you value your life or your reason, keep away from the moor. Now tell me, Mr. Holmes, what in the thunder is the meaning of all of this? Who in the world has so much interest in my affairs? It's a bit chilly in here, don't you think? Anyway, what do you make of it? I assume you have yesterday's times. Of course. Reminds me of Mr. Catanzaro's reading habits. There we go, gentlemen. Allow me to show you the leading articles. Find that of interest, Watson. What do you think? I don't really understand and terrify all of that, but it seems we are a big off track. As much as it might seem, I think we are hot on the trail 
It seems like the words in this letter were taken from this newspaper. Or, your, you, prison, and so on. Someone cut it with scissors. Nail scissors. Notice the short blade that cuts here. Glued to this paper. They attached it with gum. As you can see. But why write the word more in ink? Because he could not find it in print. Unlike the rest, the word more is very uncommon. It seems like the composer of this is very ex educated since he had access to the time. And you probably know him, Sir Henry. He is trying to conceal his handwriting from you. Also, it was written in the hotel. How can you tell? Look at the address. The pen and ink gave much trouble to the writer. Very low red pen and ink. You can deduct from that. Also weird, one of my shoes was missing. Why didn't you tell me that? It's a minor detail. Certainly it is not. Tell me about the shoe. I left it out to be cleaned. Why bother cleaning shoes never worn? They had never been varnished. I'm quite sure we'll find the missing boot soon. Well then, after all it seems like a useless thing for me. Like Dr. Mortimer, I believe you'll find the boot soon. Please Dr. Mortimer, repeat the story one more time for our friend here. Well then, I heard this story since I was in the nursery. I assume it resurfacing means danger for us. Well, this is what we have to find out. Now Mr. Holmes, as you can see it's half past eleven. I would like to go back to the hotel and have a quiet hour to make up my mind. Well, should I have a cab called? No need for a cab, Mr. Holmes. I These events got me stirred up. I prefer to walk. I would join for a walk with pleasure. Splendid. We will meet again at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Dr. Watson. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Put on your jacket, Watson. Quick! Come on! Wait for me, Dr. Mortimer. I just placed my shoes. To a random stop them. Not for the world, my dear Watson. I'm perfectly satisfied with the company you tolerated, mine. Shut up, look. That's our men. Come along. Watson, my dear, look at the starry sky. What do you see? Well, as a man of belief, I can see how small humanity is against the infinite power of creation. What else can you see? Well, as an amateur astronomer, I can see how minor our solar system is compared to the whole universe. What do you see, Sherlock? As a detective, I can see our tent was stolen. <laughs>